Joining me now is Jose Johnson, who picked up a big win, earning a UFC contract at Dana White's Contender Series with a UD win over Jack Cartwright. Jose, how are you? I'm great, brother. How are you? I, I'm good. And as I was telling you before we, we went live here, man, I was up and down, jumping out of my seat. I, I, I couldn't sit still throughout that whole fight. I, I can't imagine what it was like for you. Was that the hardest fought victory of your career? Um, hardest fought victory. Uh, I want to say, I want to honestly, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. Um, because of everything included into it, you know, it was, it was, um, my extremely huge appearance in front of Dana White again. Um, and I had overcame a lot of things leading up to the fight. Uh, just, yeah, the makings of everything that came together definitely made it the the hardest fought victory for sure. Did, did you feel added pressure going into this one with your second crack here at Contender Series? Like if you, I mean, we've seen guys get third opportunities there before, but did you feel like, you know, if I don't go in there and, and do this now and get this contract, I might not get another shot. Uh, I definitely did. Um, and I actually said it in my, um, my, 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 like the interviews that they do when they come and they, they fly you out like a couple months prior to the fight. I actually said it in my interview. I was like, I, I know I'm not going to get too many more of these chances. So I got to make the best out of this one. I uh, can't settle for anything when I'm in there. Uh, I have to keep pushing the action. It's really hard to do when you got a guy who's really not trying to push the action. So uh, I made the best out of it. Now, as I'm sure you're very well aware, judging nowadays is kind of wacky. You never really know what they're looking at, how they're judging fights. H how did you and your team feel, you know, going into the third round and then, you know, it was all said and done. Uh, did you feel very confident that you were going to get your hand raised? Um, <clears throat> I felt that there was the, for the first round, uh, I was very, de I was definitely very scared about because I got caught in that Dars early um, and that, that shit was tight. It was super tight. Um, so I, I I was really worried for that first round. I thought that the judges were gonna were gonna get it wrong, but I ended up mounting him twice, you know, and uh, delivering some some elbows. Uh, controlled a lot of positions. Uh, I didn't settle on the bottom at all uh, with strikes and with trying to sweep and butterfly hooks. I was always consistently elevating them and doing something. I was making sure in the judge's eyes, I was doing something always to try to advance my positioning at the end of the third round or at the beginning of the third round. I knew I had it. I just had to continue with the same game plan because I knew he was going to try to continue with the same game plan. Did you feel confident? I mean, although you got to win, did you feel confident you were going to get a contract? I was not sure I was going to get a contract because um, I had, like I said, he was, he had a, <clears throat> he told me he was going to do something different at weigh-ins. He talked a lot and then he did something completely different. And I, I know I have a style that usually turns like strikers into, into wrestlers, but I didn't, I didn't know he was going to be that wrestle heavy, to be honest. And uh, I was, I was like, man, at the end of the fight, I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, shit, I should have got the finish. There's so many things that I could have done, done differently. I don't think I did enough. And then, like after rewatching the fight myself, um, not living in it, I was like, "Yeah, I definitely did enough," you know. But I was a little worried. I was definitely a little worried. When when you went back to your corner after the first and second round, what were the adjustments that they wanted you to make? <clears throat> well, my um, my jujitsu coach Phil, uh, he definitely was like, "I need you to be more active on your butterfly hooks." And when we say active on our butterfly hooks, we mean like elevating the hips, trying to get the hips away. I did really good with inserting both of my butterfly hooks, but it was a rocking system to try to get him back on his, uh, on his, on his toes and for him to sit on his heels is what I needed to happen. And a little bit more off balancing is what uh, the cornering advice that I got. How did you feel about your cardio after the end of the third round? Did you feel still pretty fresh? Like if this was a five round fight, you would have been good to go in four and five. Definitely. I, I felt fresh. Uh, I felt frustrated with myself because I just wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to strike more, you know, that's what, that's what definitely gets you signed. And I wanted to, I wanted to throw my hands a little bit more. He, he just wasn't about that, I guess.
Well, man, I mean, you, your striking is is clearly top notch. So I can't I can't say I blame him. It, 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 you know, we all saw the post fight uh, interview and all of that, and you know the the emotions. It, it got to me. I'm sure anyone watching the fight, you know, got to them too. Um, what, just what does it mean to you looking back now th that big night? You know, last Tuesday getting this this contract and and now newest member of of the UFC. How, how does that feel? Oh man, it's it's a dream come true. You know, I. I've worked the last 10 years of my life on this uh, cutting weight, gaining weight, cutting weight, gaining weight, going to different weight classes. Like I've done everything that you possibly can do to try to get noticed, you know, as many times as I have in this extremely huge weight class that I fight in. Uh, it's one of the hardest weight classes to make it in. And for me to have been recognized almost four times now, um, that shows a lot about my work ethic and how hard I work. What were some of the lessons that you learned in your first uh, contender series fight with Ronnie Lawrence? Is there, was there anything specifically that you took from that fight to help you grow as a fighter? I mean, you went on to, to beat Mo Miller, who I think eventually is going to be in the UFC. So you've grown a lot as a fighter. What, what did you take from that? Um, <clears throat> I definitely uh, took from that fight that I, I needed to work on my recovery more. I needed to rest more. I think I did entirely too much for that fight camp. I peaked in extremely early in the fight camp and I tried to like put it together. I needed to be a lot more active. If I were to get put on my back, I settled, I settled in a lot of positions uh, in that fight. I needed to work more on my cardio. Uh, I needed to work more on my jujitsu. Like it's so much, I can go down a whole list because I've watched that fight at least 250 times and I can go down a whole list of things that I needed to do to do better. And I'm working towards those things and it showed in this last performance. Do, do you have any medical suspension or anything like that? Or are you able to, to get back in there soon? They told me, they told me because it went three rounds. I like, I have to technically be on a 12 day suspension, but after then I'm ready to go. All right. W would you prefer to get a full camp in for your UFC debut? Um, I've been in camp for about six months now. So, I mean, I'm ready now. I don't need it. I don't need a full camp again. I'm already in shape. I'm already ready. Okay. Do, do, do you plan on taking a, a, any, any trips or anything like that? Or are you just lasered in on getting back in as soon as possible? Um, like taking trips as far as vacation goes or like, yeah. oh, I'm definitely enjoying myself. You know, um, me and my lady are going to go do a couple things. Um, trying to, trying to keep it a surprise and she in the background right now. <laughs> um, but definitely got some things that, that I want to do. Um, but it's lasered and even when I go and I travel places, I know every pe like people everywhere. So I train and get work in even when I'm doing that as well. It's never a day off really. What are some of your hobbies or things that you like to do outside of MMA? Right there, you're a gamer. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm, I'm, my cousin's um, playing with me right now. We're about to play Call of Duty. Uh, that and I just like to hang out with my friends really. I only got like, I have a really small circle. So I just kind of just chill with them, uh, my daughter, then my girl. It's really what I'll do. I do all day. What What are some of your favorite games that, that you get into that you like to play? I just went to Walmart and I just kind of went crazy and got a bunch of games for the Switch. Uh, so, like, I'm a big anime head. Uh, I just went and got Demon Slayer, uh, Smash Bros, because my girl was talking crap saying she was going to beat me. So I'm going to have to school her in that. Uh, I'm on Call of Duty all the time, my cousin, and uh, Apex, actually, recently getting back into Apex. All right, v very cool. I wanted to ask you, too, because you you, you look very tall for, for the division. What is it like for you to, to get down to 135? Is, is that fairly easy? Fucking terrible. <laughs> but, I, but I make it. It's, it's really not that bad of a cut now. It was a lot of things that I needed to cut out. I think the most frustrating thing to cut out is uh, – is drinking because I love to drink. Uh, so that's the most frustrating thing to cut out. But once I cut that out, it usually falls off. I'm good about drinking water. So I've been water loading like my whole life pretty much. So I got that down to a science. And as far as me being tall for the weight class, I'm, I'm a freaking giant for the weight class. Love it. 
Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. That, that's definitely going to aid you uh, as far as maybe future success with the UFC, I, I would imagine. I want to get a couple of fight picks from you, my man. So tomorrow night is uh, obviously UFC 278. Uh, Jose Aldo and Murad Vashvili, uh, that's a bantamweight fight that I'm sure you're going to be v- very eagerly tuning into. Who do you see winning that one? Ooh, man, that's a that's going to be a freaking crazy fight. Um, I feel like Marav is going to bring out the Jose Aldo that we've been waiting to see for like the last five years now. The the old Jose, I feel like he's gonna bring he's gonna bring him out. Uh, I feel like he's gonna go back to those leg kicks that I love so much mm-hmm. because he's gonna have to he's gonna have to slow Marav down. He's gonna have to slow him down because his pace is crazy. It's insane. Um, I'm a huge Jose Aldo fan anyway, so I'm gonna go with my heart and I'm gonna go with Jose on that one. Right. I got him with I got I get him with I got him with a decision win. Okay. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. And the, the main event obviously is for the welterweight title. Kamaru Usman has just looked so dominant in there. And you know, Leon Edwards is no joke, very well rounded, and this is a rematch seven years in the making. Are we gonna have Ann Still or are we gonna have a new champ here in the main event? I I definitely say Ann Still. I don't think I don't, I don't think I think he's gonna be able to take him down. Uh, I think he's gonna take him down early, and then he's gonna do what he does, uh, the same thing he did to uh, Jorge Masvidal, where he kind of faked him, faked the takedown, and come with the overhand. I feel like he's gonna put him to sleep. He's gonna put him to sleep in probably the third. That's what I'm predicting. Okay, and, and a couple of bantamweight fights we're looking forward to. I want to get your thoughts on the title fight, uh, Sterling and Dillashaw, and then Jan and O'Malley. Who are your your winners there? I do not like O'Malley, and I made that very evident to everybody during my uh, my after after my fight, my free fight interview, um, or my post fight interview. I, but I gotta give him credit where credit is due. He's a sniper, man. Uh, I study him a lot, like his movement. Um, I think that's gonna be a fun fight for me one day, you know. So. Um, I think he's going to, I think he's going to snipe the, sh- the shit out of, to, of Jan, to be honest. I think Jan is very straightforward. Um, his Dutch kickboxing is beautiful, uh, but the range is going to be a problem for him. So I, I got O'Malley winning that one. I got TJ Dillashaw destroying Aljamain Sterling, to be honest. Uh, his wrestling is, is top tier. And pretty much all we've seen from really Aljo is, you know, a decent jujitsu game and some wrestling. Okay. Wow. I, uh, I can't wait for all of those fights to be honest with you. They're all marquee matchups. Last thing for me, Jose, before I do let you go here, uh, a perfect time frame for your UFC debut. And I mean, I know you're a new guy here, so you're probably not going to, the, the matchmakers aren't going to listen to you as, as far as like who you want, but who do you want? Is there anyone that you feel like, you know, would make sense for your debut? make what makes sense um i really i really study i'm not even gonna lie to you i, I don't really study the the newer guys in the ufc I, I don't do that i study these 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 dogs these monsters i like to study those guys because um that's what i'm envisioning uh so it's whoever they give me honestly i don't care who it is i just i just want to fight want to get to that top so I can be that guy. All right, my man. Can't wait to see you back in there again. Congrats on the contender series win and the contract. Uh, before I do let you go, I want to give you the floor. Please tell people where they can follow you on social media. And if you have anyone to thank, the floor is yours. For sure. Um, I want to thank God for the opportunity, of course. Um, without him, none of this would be possible. I wouldn't be possible or anything like that. I want to thank uh, my parents uh, for shit for pretty much ter- making me a, a very extremely strong person uh where i'm from the 810 flint michigan uh it's, it's a tough place to to, to live so i want to that shit made me really strong uh, the dominican republic uh it's my my home place uh texas it welcomed me like family this is my third home pretty much um, my support system, my household, my family, my children. I wanna, uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at P L A T A N O underscore pride. That is Platino Pride 95. And that's about it. It's my teams. <laughs>